In this video, we'll go over some of the many different ways you can use Keyword Researcher. We've been working on this app for several years now, and it's turned into quite a big program. There are many, many different ways to use it. But I thought we'd start off just by surfing over to the Clever Gizmos website. And you can see we have this graphic here, the six foundational steps of SEO. So no matter how far you go with your website, no matter how far you go in SEO, you should at least understand what's going on in these six steps. Even if you never learn anything else about SEO, it's beneficial to understand the process here. When I was first learning SEO, I wish I had a graphic like this because I think it nicely outlines the on-page SEO workday pretty well. No matter what tool you end up using in SEO, the actual process is not going to be much different than what you see here. Let's go through this briefly. So you can see here on the left, we start with step one, gather keyword CSV files. So whether you use the Google Keyword Planner or some other tool, you need to get a series of files that reflect the keywords that you're going to sort through and some of which you will end up using on your website. So you can see in our animation here, we see a person clicking the import button in Keyword Researcher and then just dragging his files in. It's pretty much as simple as that. You almost always start out with CSV files from the Google Keyword Planner. And of course, Keyword Researcher is quite good at digesting those files. In step two, we remove the junk keywords. So no matter what happens, you have to decide which keywords you do want and which keywords you do not want on your website. So in our animation here, you can see we have a person just going down the list and clicking the blacklist button. So the blacklist button, of course, is just a label which you assign to a keyword in which you indicate that you do not want to use this keyword on your website. The whitelist just indicates that you do want to use the keyword on your website. So regardless of which SEO tool or method you use, you ultimately have to find which keywords you want and which keywords you don't want. Let's take a look at step three. Search for the good keywords. So once you actually have found some bad keywords, you have to have some search tools so you can get specific with your list and search for keywords that you're definitely going to want to target on your website. You can see in our video, we have a person doing carb and diet or low. So what this person is able to do is use logical operators to search a list of thousands of keywords for a given set of words that he's looking for. So being able to search through a list is obviously a major asset. Let's look at step four, organize the good keywords into article groups. So once you have an idea of keywords you want and keywords that you don't want, then SEO is mostly about assigning keywords to articles. That's what the mouse is doing in the graphic here. That is in many ways what SEO comes down to, just assigning keywords into logical groups on your website. And then you actually have to write content. That's step five, where you create content that has the keywords that you want in your article. You have to make sure to get your keywords in your article content. And what we can see here in the animation is the user typing a sentence and then clicking the highlighter icon to make sure that his keywords are there. Ultimately, your keywords have to be in your content somewhere. And then the last step is just to publish your content. Ultimately, you have to get the keywords onto the internet somehow. And our little graphic here is showing the user export his article content into a WordPress XML file. So a lot of people use WordPress these days, and that's good, WordPress is great. It's probably the best CMS out there. Unfortunately, Keyword Researcher can export directly to a WordPress file. So you can upload your content directly into any WordPress installation. So there you have it. Those are the six foundational steps of SEO, which you can check out on the Keyword Researcher website page. Pretty much no matter what tool you use, a typical day of SEO is going to involve these six steps. Find keywords, remove junk keywords, search for the good keywords, organize the keywords into logical groups, write your article using these keywords, and then publish your content articles to the internet. You can't really take out any process in this chain and Keyword Researcher was designed from the ground up to help SEO guys with this process, with these six steps. Now, what if we don't actually have a domain name for our website yet? What if we're trying to actually think of a new website or we haven't decided what we're going to name our new project yet, what we're gonna name our new, our new website? Well, here's one way to do it. You can, if this, if we're making a carb-free diet website, then we might start off by just typing carb and free in the search box because 
It's a safe bet to say we might want the words cog free in our actual domain name. And we don't want to use too many words in our actual domain name. So what if I put less than, um, less than four here next to the actual word. And that will just show me all the keywords that contain the word carb free and have less than four words in the actual keyword phrase. And so you can see, you can kind of imagine these words here as ending in a .com or a .org or a .net, carbfreediet.com. That was probably taken, of course. But you can imagine um, these would be, might make a good domain name. So what we can do at this point is we're searching or we're sorting by the average monthly searches. And let's maybe take the top, I don't know, the top seven or so. And we'll do a copy. And then we'll go over to the GoDaddy bulk domain name checker. This is a really, really great tool owned by GoDaddy. And it'll tell you what's available if you want to get a domain name. I always select com, org, and net. These are CTLDs. So these are called classic top level domains. And Google has a programmatic bias to rank classic top level domains above other domain names. It used to be stronger than it um, is currently, it appears, but it's still there. There's a bias towards these three um, types of domain names. So I'm going to search for these words here and uh, GoDaddy is going to remove the space for me. And I just hit go and you can see I have some words available. Uh, carbfreefoods.org is available. And you can see that one has 2,900 searches per month. So that's pretty good. I mean, that would be if you were actually in the business of making a carb-free website, then carb-free foods is not a bad name. And it already has um, 2,900 searches. So you could rank for that fairly easily if you had a real business model. In task five, let's say you want to find a product name. Now, this file is actually my own personal SEO file for my other app, Window Blocker. You might be aware of it. Window Blocker is a time management application. And along with the actual program, there's a little ebook. And when I was making the ebook, the ebook just comes free with the program. So I don't know exactly what I'm gonna do with it, you know, in the years to come, what I'm, what I'm gonna do with that information. But I wanted to give the ebook a name so that at least it would reflect some sort of SEO value as well as reflect a topic that people are actually searching for. You can, as you can see here, I've uh, categorized many, let's see, 3,708 uh, time management and productivity words into this file. And of course, the point in that is to, you know, try to find which keywords are reflective of my target clientele. And you can see that in this first category here called time management, um, you know, obviously time management itself, that keyword was searched for 110,000 times per month, but that word is quite broad. It just says that could be somebody who's just looking for a definition of time management, or that could be somebody who's looking to buy software or somebody who has you know, a company with 50 people and he wants to manage them better. So that's a very, very broad word. So it, it, so naming, naming my ebook time management would have been probably too broad. This next one here, time management tips, you know, tips, that kind of sounds like somebody who's just looking for a brief article on the internet, time management tips. And what I decided on was time management skills. And you can actually see that in the book cover, Time Management Skills. This is the, the art I drew as well as the cover of the actual ebook. And so the, there's a method to the madness here of naming the actual ebook. As you can see, I at least know that in the world there are 12,100 people last month who actually typed in those words, Time Management Skills. So if those people typed in those words and I have that book, then you would think that there's some congruity there with what they seek, and what I can provide. So even if I decide to never actually sell the book, then at least it's good to, you know, I have this name here where it's an, it's an SEO optimized title of a product, my product, my ebook. 
And that's good because down the road, you know, if I ever do work with it more and I get more name recognition, then I'm also going to get that free SEO value and maybe eventually rank number one for that word, time management skills. So I don't know how ambitious I'm going to be in the time management niche. These other SEO niches occupy a lot of my time, but time management is a, is a, is a major hobby of mine. And so who knows? I might come back to it someday, but in the least, I can rest assured that I've named my product based on a name, based on a phrase that people are actually typing into Google. In fact, 12,000 people a month are typing this phrase into Google. One of the newer features in Keyword Organizer is the new Web Page Analyzer tab. Now, this is a tab that I was personally looking forward to for for years. I wanted a tab like this, and I, I literally had to make my own software to make it happen. But um, this was actually one of the initial goals in the very earliest versions of Keyword Organizer going back a couple of years. So what this does is it allows you to look at a website from an SEO perspective. So I have a sample website here and I can paste this here. This is just like a typical browser. And you can see what Keyword Organizer does is it loads the website just as a regular browser would. But it also looks for the title tag and the URL and the meta description. It's very, very, very important. So if, if you're familiar with SEO, you know that the title tag is usually considered the, the, the dominant SEO element, followed by the, um, the permalink and then uh, usually the content of the article itself. So a big job in SEO is to try to determine if your target keywords are actually in your content or in your competitor's content, if this was a competitor's page. And you also wanted to know if the content is actually residing in the proper HTML tags. And that's what this little switch does here on the right. You can see when I flip the switch, it turns on the heading tags and you can see the H1 tag has become highlighted in yellow as well as the H2 tag here. And I can see some of the, um, the chapter breaks as well in the actual article. Now, when it comes to knowing what my keywords are, and see I have a list of uh, low carb snack keywords here on the left. And when I click the little highlighter icon, then the location of the keyword in the document elements will actually highlight. So I can see that it's clear to me that this article is in some way targeting the phrase low carb snacks because that phrase appears in green. Uh, green just means it appears in total. Here in the title of the document, it appears in the permalink of the document. It's also in the meta description. It also appears in total in the H1 tag of the document. So when you're doing SEO, this is pretty much what you're looking for. You're looking to get your target keyword phrase often it's often called your trophy keyword you you want to make sure that that appears prominently in uh, various locations in your document content and of course we can uh, click the highlighter button on the other keywords as well and we consider targeting these as as secondary trophy keywords for our actual document. So that is a very, very, very useful item to have when you're actually doing on-site SEO because ultimately the keywords themselves should be in the document in one shape, in one way, shape, or form. And that lets the search engines know, that lets Google know uh, what your document is actually about. Because ultimately machines are not that smart and in many ways they still use just the keyword phrase itself to index your content and that's how the machine knows what your content is about. So you got to get your keywords into your content and Keyword Organizer will help you and let you know if the keyword is actually on the web page via the web page analyzer tab in Keyword Organizer. Another task in the website process, the website creation process that comes up a lot is the existence of corrupted HTML or uh, text that's not properly formatted. You can see, here's an example of a guy who has these little black check marks in his document. You see this a lot 
on the internet with people who don't quite understand how text works or they've imported from Microsoft Word and it's it's created some some improperly formatted text in their HTML. And that could be very, very challenging to clean up. So in um, Keyword Organizer, we've actually made a cleanup button. And you can see I've pasted some corrupted text here. Like we have this weird character here on top. We have these quotation marks, which are not the standard textual quotation marks. You can see they have a slant on them. We have this space here and a space here, more corrupted quotation marks. And then we have all these trailing spaces here on the end of the actual um, HTML text. So when you actually get this into WordPress, a lot of times it'll come out corrupted or into your actual HTML document. It'll come out corrupted because the browser may or may not know how to actually render these characters. So we add this little broom icon here called HTML cleanup. And when you click that, your entire document has just been turned into properly formatted HTML text. And that will save you from having this problem of these weird characters appearing in your actual document. So not only does Keyword Organizer help you write your document, it also will make sure that the HTML text itself comes out right. Another feature in Keyword Organizer that is pretty important is the ability to export your content and your keywords from the actual program. Now you can see we've built a native XLS exporter, meaning you can export directly to Microsoft Excel. That was really important to me because I, I hate it when I'm using a program and I can only export as a CSV file because those files are not very well formatted when you actually go to open them in Excel. But you can see our file is an actual Excel file. And when you actually get into Excel, you can see the keywords are color coded and the column widths and formats and font is already done for you. And everything is nicely broken down here with keywords and in the articles tab itself, you have all your content here. So that's really good because Excel ultimately is still really, really useful when you're handling large amounts of data. And if you ever need to export out of Excel, then that can come in really, really handy. Now we're coming back to what is probably the, the primary reason why Keyword Organizer was invented in the first place. And that, of course, is just to SEO optimize an article. Now, um, SEO optimizing an article is not a difficult thing to do, but it's a tedious thing to do because you have to make sure that you get these keywords where they're supposed to go in the, the title, the slug, the meta description, and the content. That's what these four letters mean here. T, S, M, and C. Title, slug, meta description, and content. And when you turn the little highlighter icon on, then you could see where the keyword, in this case, the keyword low carb diet, you can see where those words are appearing. And these four boxes will change colors based on if the keyword is or is not in that location. So you can see the T here stands for title, of course, and now it's currently green. And that's telling us that the keyword itself is in the title. So the active SEO optimizing a document just involves this tedious process of getting the keyword phrases into the actual document. Now, when you try to do this without a tool, it, it can be pretty challenging because you're always going back and forth and you're trying to check if the keyword is or is not in the document or did you move something around or is it appearing in the right place? But here with um, these icons here, you can always know exactly what's going on with your document and it makes the chore of SEO optimizing a document much, much easier. It'd be very, very challenging for me to go back to the old days before I had my own app and try to SEO optimize a document. I really wouldn't want to do it because you have to have some sort of tool where your keywords are on the left and your text is on the right and you have to make sure that these keywords are getting into your actual article content. And that's where the magic of the SEO properties of Keyword Organizer happens. And of course, since your main database of keywords is always here on the left, then whenever you find something that should have been placed in that article, you simply drag 
the keyword over, and then that appears right in the article tree itself. And then you can go adding that content to your actual article content. You add that keyword to your article content. Uh, and yeah, w without, um, keyword organizer, you'd, you'd have to maybe switch between Excel and Microsoft Word and maybe put Excel on the left of your screen and Word on the right of your screen and try to kind of try to visually try to get those keywords in there. But it's a very tedious process, but this makes it a lot, lot easier. And now we come to the last function uh, that we're going to talk about today, and that is laying out a content strategy. Ultimately, Keyword Organizer is, is a content strategy tool, and it will help you lay out all these articles. Now, if you ever tried to actually SEO optimize more than one article, then you're probably aware of how challenging it is because that every article has to have their own set of keywords. And every piece of content for the article has to contain these keywords. And you spend a lot of time trying to make sure that your, your content doesn't conflict. And it, it can be a very, very tedious process to just do one article. Now, if you're going to try to do five or 50 articles, then that is, is quite challenging with that, without some sort of tool. Uh, you'd have to be pretty good at uh, Microsoft Excel to, to do something like that. But with Keyword Organizer, it's really simple because everything is just divided into articles and categories. And whenever you want to create a new piece of content, you just create a new category or create a new article in the category. You can, of course, just drag content and articles around. And you can even create paragraphs in the actual articles to help you to um, kind of discern where you're actually going to place keywords and everything is just drag and drop. So you can plan out an entire website right here within this one little tree and then do all of your content here just to the right of the tree. And of course, to the left of the tree, you have your main database of keywords. So if you do anything with SEO at all, then this, this starts to get quite valuable really, really fast because um, the SEO chore is quite tedious um, it, it, once you actually get past the first article. When, when you're doing more than one article, it's you have to have something similar to this or have your own very rigorous process down because managing keywords in this fashion is really challenging. Um, it, it's probably the most difficult part of the SEO chore. And then once your content is actually done, you actually have to get your content to the website. And you can see we have... A, a native WordPress exporter here. We can actually export a WordPress XML file. If you don't know what that is, it's just a file that contains all of your content. So when I select all my articles and click export, I can just name my file and then the seven articles were just created. And then I can just go to my WordPress installation and I can just bring in that file and all of my articles will be instantly published to my WordPress website. So that is a major, major asset if you're actually in the business of creating SEO optimized content strategies, because to do that without a tool like this, you'd have to use maybe Excel and several Microsoft Word documents, and that would be quite a chore. So I hope I've done a good job explaining how to use Keyword Researcher for various aspects of the SEO process. If you do anything at all with keywords, then chances are you will probably find something in this app that you can use for your own web business. Now, if you have any questions, get in touch with us at the contact page. And thanks for watching.